Greetings and welcome back everyone to Scrap Mechanic and to our base. Now with Drawbridge. Ah, glorious. And of course, it is a drawbridge that can be activated from either side, naturally. I've just built an XOR down there to uh, control this. I had to rebuild our gate. It, no different from the last time. Well, perhaps a little tiny bit different in hopes that I won't have to rebuild it again. But... Uh, Scrap Mechanic does suffer a little bit from loading the game. I saved out, and when I came back to record, the gate was kind of just glitching through the wall. Kind of like the lift. I, For a moment, my heart sank. But uh, I have, I believe, fixed the problem. Now, in this episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of a science-y episode in preparations for building our first real flyer. And when I say fly, I don't mean just something that can, can you know, kind of hover in the sky. I kind of want to make a rocket, but a pilotable rocket, or, or a fighter jet, or something like that. I, I don't dream small. I may dream impossible, but I don't dream small. Now, the first step to, to doing anything like that is to get a, a gyroscope system for dealing with the craft's instabilities. However, I think it would be more fun to, to put any kind of information like that into practice to really solidify it in your mind. So, we're going to just build ourselves... A vehicle, just a, a large car, if you like, and I'm probably going to use the basis of this large vehicle to gradually move the rest of the uh, of the systems we build up through first a car, then a hovercraft, and ultimately onto a rocket. Though I'll probably have to redesign the rocket from the ground up. I'll be honest with you on that one. Now. First and foremost, what we're going to need, I would suspect, is a center point. A gyroscope is going to need a, a very specific center point to operate with. So I'm going to draw this line down there, and that's going to be the center of our vehicle, and we'll have a bunch of metal on the other side. I'm probably just going to make it a, a fairly large car, but a tall car at that, because I want it to be able to tip fairly freely. Now, that might seem counterintuitive, and it is a little bit, but I need something to be able to test the gyro on. So, we're going to want this to be able to, to tip fairly happily. It is not going to be a stable car at all. So, for that, we're going to want it to be fairly long, but I don't want to make it out of the heaviest block that we want. I want something lighter so that it can tip a bit more freely. Um, let's find something that's generally a lightweight, perhaps. Well, the ducts, maybe. I'm not entirely certain about that. We've also got these. The table supports are pretty light. And these. Yeah, okay, we'll, uh, we'll go with a couple of very light supports here, so uh, possibly something like this. We just want to extend out the vehicle a little bit, and you know me, I like to, to make them look fancy, even if they're not really here for looking fancy. Ah, uh, I've got a problem, I suppose. Right, there we go. That's good enough for me. And this is where we will attach our wheels, right at the front. So we'll just draw this out. No, oh, not quite that, that wide. And that should be good enough, I think. We'll have the uh, wheels mounted in that little recess there. Perfect. Now, on the back, we're actually going to have to build up the sides just a little in order to allow us to actually have thrusters. Because my plan with the car that's stabilized by a gyroscope is for the car to just basically try to avoid tipping over. That's all I'm going to be aiming for with this. Let's actually have some wood at the back to uh, make the gyroscope platform. Um, that might be good enough. That would be a very small gyroscope. And generally, I, I would appreciate having a larger gyroscope than a smaller one, simply because the larger you make it, the less aggressive an angle it's going to have to... the vehicle's going to have to tip to before the gyroscope starts to compensate or rather starts triggering the sensors which will in turn compensate so we'll do something like this but the main thing is that everything needs to be nice and balanced so i'm actually going to go ahead and probably just speed up through building the the rest of this i'll either cut straight back to it or, or i'll time lapse it but when you return we'll be ready to actually do the sciencey stuff of adding in the gyroscope so i shall see you then
Jack it up. Okay, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've built something using some of the ideas that I actually have developed for the trike in some ways. But overall, this should be a fairly easy vehicle to tip. I am a little bit concerned about uh, how much room there is underneath. I might actually have just some free wheels there just so that we could uh, go over any lumps in the road. Now, there are two points I want to make. Firstly, I have gone to some effort to try and balance the forward and backward weight. Not, it isn't the, the primary for this vehicle. This vehicle is meant to be tipping left to right rather than worrying about forward and back because if we're going up a hill, we're going to ne necessarily tip back or tip forward if we're going down a hill. So I don't really want the gyro reacting to that. We are going to build the gyro that could, but we're just not going to hook up the reaction to do anything. It'll simply know that we're tipping backwards or forwards, but it won't, won't try to correct it. It's the role that we want to correct as much as possible. So to that end, I have actually allowed the back to just be a little bit taller than the front because I just kind of like that, I guess. Uh, let's actually see how this drive has got a lot of clearance underneath which is actually quite nice now will this turn the right way yes it will fantastic now these limbs on the top don't actually um move they they don't reposition or anything like that this is not the not the objective here i actually need to give this engine a little bit of oh no come back come back you haha got you that's right you scoundrel i need to hook you up there we go ah there we go Ah, it's fantastic just be able to walk under the, the, the car. Right, let's see. Will this actually get in the way? I've, I've given it uh, all of the, the drive in the front. That will prevent us tipping up too badly in some places. But I strongly suspect we're about to beach ourselves on this hill. And there's more curiosity than anything else. Oh, no, we actually made it across. Huh. Okay, I'm a little bit impressed with myself. All right, well... Now, we'll head back to the uh, base. Ooh, turning circle on this is like trying to turn a barn. In fact, <laughs> we might actually be able to fit some cattle on this. I've built a land arc, everyone. Oh, this is fantastic. Right, let me get back to the base. And then we're going to start work on the gyroscope. Thank you. 
and welcome back. As you can see, we have finished our construction. In fact, the gyroscope itself is all but complete. Now, I've relocated to somewhere that is a little bit flatter because when we start this thing up, it does really quite need to be on a level surface uh, because if this is already tilted when it starts it doesn't seem to react particularly well now just to give you a quick demonstration i've already hooked this up to a switch and there we go now they are counter rotating so the top one is rotating i believe clockwise and the bottom one counterclockwise or, or vice versa now that is by design if they don't do that then well it's actually kind of pretty much the whole point of the system is to use that because as i've mentioned if only one were to rotate and you didn't have the bottom one, it would actually apply a counter force to the vehicle itself and all things would go a little bit screwy. So by having this happening there, we are balancing the forces being applied to this brace moving along here. But this isn't yet a complete system. Now I'm just going to pop this back up on the lift for a second because we do need to build a couple more things. Unfortunately, the way this lift works is right now it's spawning without actually being connected to anything and that does result in a few things being a bit curious right let's pop these down now what i'm doing here is actually probably not going to be necessary for how we want to use our gyroscope in this instance but i'm gonna oh that's not in the right place ah oh, scallywags whenever i disconnect something when the lift starts disconnected like that it Seems to remember, oh, I'm not actually attached to the lift. Never mind. Uh, scoundrels, you. But let's get this all sorted out if I can. Can I? <clears throat> Sorry, a bit of a throg in my throat there. I cannot. Also, that is way too low. That is much lower than I was expecting. Okay, very well. Probably shouldn't make it that, that long anyway. No, no, come on, come on. Nah, let, let me back. Yes, that'll do. I accept. I'll make it too long. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah, damn it. Why must you be so finicky, stupid thing? Also, I'm smacking you the wrong way. No, come back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Violence is never the answer. Ah, drat. You were behaving so well before. Showing me up on camera, you scoundrel, you. Right, okay, so there we are. <laughs> now, I'm just going to reset it again with the lift, and then we'll have a proper look at this. Now, the idea here is that we're going to be using sensors. The sensors will be set to detect the the roll and the pitch of the vehicle. So you want the sensors in line with this bar uh, to control pitch. Now, I always get the terms wrong. What I mean to say is, is up and down, the nose pitching up and down. I believe pitch is the right one. I do apologize if I'm using the wrong one. Again, English, not my first language. Though, honestly, I don't feel that that, uh, that, is, that is a reasonable excuse. I'm speaking English, so I should make sure I'm using the right bloody words, whether it's my first language or not. Right, here we go. There we are. Okay, so the idea here is fairly simple, actually. As the vehicle is moving around this is relatively going to be um free of the of the forces of the vehicle so it will tend to rotate independently that's why the bearing over there and the bearing here are not hooked up to anything we don't want any outside force really affecting them other than gravity now the the rotors here are going to be keeping this more or less level outside of something actually hitting into them. So the idea would be that as we're moving around, this will remain level with the horizon regardless of how this vehicle is moving. So for example, if this were to start um, dipping down or, or, or pitching, I'll just simulate that with an extra weight there. This would start to move down, this sensor would trigger, and it would register that the front of the vehicle is currently tipping down and the, and the rear is, is rising up, and then you could have some thrusters firing to try and compensate. And the opposite is true. If this was rising up instead, then it would be a signal that the nose is rising. Now, what we're actually interested on this particular vehicle isn't whether we're pitching it's whether we're rolling so i need to make a separate system but much the same in its uh aim and that is to register the movement of this specifically if this starts to to list one side or the other then it's going to tell us that the vehicle is starting to roll so let me simulate that by popping a little bit of extra weight there and there we go. So this is telling the vehicle, or rather the sensors, right now that we're rolling to the right and that we're going to need to compensate to try and balance out. 
So let's uh, get rid of that. There we go. Now I'm going to have to reset the vehicle again, unfortunately. I'm sorry. There's going to be a lot of resetting while I'm explaining this. There we are. Now, the idea would be that we would use thrusters to compensate for the roll. Now, on a car, we're only really caring about the roll because generally I want to be going up cliffs or, or down cliffs for that matter. So I don't want this trying to fight against me when I'm doing that. But if I'm tipping to one side or the other, that's something I want the thrusters to try and help correct. Now, with this, I do want to give a, a bit of a shout out to a, another YouTuber named Snowcrash. I will be including a link in this video to their video. They do some fantastic tutorials on Scrap Mechanic. In fact, they've got a gyro stabilizer tutorial, and I learned a couple of things from that. Specifically, I want to give credit for the system I am now about to build, and that is a thruster correction system. Now, a lot of people have asked, well, is it possible to have thrusters that don't apply their full force straight away perhaps the sensors only uh, apply a little bit of input based on how close they are to the ground now that's not possible with the sensors but it is possible with the thrusters to make them a little bit less um bossy if you want to put it that way uh let me just rotate that so it's a little bit easier for me to draw out there we go now what we're going to be trying to do is to get the thrusters to only apply a part of their force early on and, and just kind of ramp that up the longer they're applying it. And previously I was thinking, well, one way we could do that is just by making the whole vehicle much more heavy. So the, the effect of the thrust will, would have a diminished effect because the mass of the vehicle would be much larger and it would require more thrust to uh, push it around. Snow Crash has a significantly more elegant solution. And that's why I really want to give credit for this, because I think it's a glorious solution myself. Right, let's pop this down here. We are going to put our thrusters on suspension. So simple, so elegant. Why I didn't think of it, I honestly don't know. I was almost tempted to commit ritual suicide to restore my family's honor. But thankfully, I decided against it so that I could at least show everyone else this wonderful design. So let's, uh, I'm sorry, Santa, but I need to pass. Let's get over here and set it up on these sides as well. Now, if you were building a hovercraft, and eventually we will be, that's, that's what we're kind of building up to with all of this, you would not want to, oh, that's really going to be a pain, isn't it? Well, I'm going to have to move you to make sure that everything is balanced. Sorry about this. But uh, we don't actually need this component anyway, so... But uh, if you were building a ho hovercraft, you would want the thrusters to not quite be aligned in the same way that I'm doing here, with all of the thrusters pointing up on each side. You'd want something more along the lines of you'd have two thrusters pointing up on this side, two thrusters pointing down on the other, because you want to pivot on your central axis. You don't want to just lift one side, so you're basically tipping um, kind of a, a large motion. You want, you want to spin on the central point of your vehicle, not not on the outside. Okay, I have rebuilt the sensor tower. In fact, I've rebuilt both of them and I've wired them up to the thrusters. I've done a little bit more than that as well and I will go over that in a moment. This uh, sensor really does need to be so far uh, forward that it's not likely to be triggered by this when it, when it triggers. So this, is, this really does need to be this far out. Um, and that this needs to be just a little bit shorter so that this doesn't accidentally trigger it. I mean, if it's pitched all the way forward or back, it probably still can, but in that case, it should be triggering it anyway. Now, over here, I had to move this thing all the way back. Now, the reason why I needed to do that is I realized while I was setting this up and uh, positioning this thruster, I was going to try and put it in the middle, and then I realized, oh, well, actually, it'll trigger on this. And then... I realized, well, actually, where it was before, it would have triggered on this anyway. So there's, there's a, a word to the wise. Make sure that the sensors are only going to trigger on the parts that you actually want them to trigger on. I mean, you probably already realized that. I'm just a bit derpy. So this sensor stack will only trigger now on the gimbal as it rotates. And you may also notice that I've just changed a little bit of the cubes that I'm using for the gyroscope itself. One of the problems that I've noticed with Scrap Mechanic is that blocks... Of the, about the only, the actual building material blocks seem to be the only blocks that have frick, well, don't, don't apply friction in any way. You may have noticed in my trike video that when I had these, um, these corner pipes 
going around the other side of the wheel, sometimes it would jam the wheel as if it was applying friction, even though it was not connected or shouldn't have been connected. Well, in this case, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've just replaced those joints over here with blocks because this is actually an incredibly important connection. I need this to I need to be absolutely certain that when this um, pitches up or down, that this is free to move with it. Not that we're reacting on that, but if this doesn't move with it, then it will eventually throw out the entire gyroscope. A small problem will will affect the whole system. So even though we're not trying to react on that, you really do need to build the the the, the system to be able to even if you're not going to be paying any attention so i've made sure that these two blocks uh, should be frictionless and because of the weight concerns i replaced these blocks and, and since i was already doing it anyway i did the same thing over here as well but it's very much the same system you saw me build earlier and it is now time at last for us to see if the thing works so let's see is that wobbly at all no not too wobbly i probably could uh, expand those limbs a little bit and honestly I think for any serious design I would. Now the way that the thrusters are hooked up, I'll just quickly cover this, the top sensor is hooked up to the left thrusters, the bottom sensor is hooked up to the right thrusters or as far as facing forward for the vehicle. Because if this limb of the gimbal starts to rise it means that uh, the gimbal is trying to remain level with the horizon which means the left has been rising quite aggressively. So I need to push that left side down. The opposite is true if the gimb if this side of the gimbal starts to lower, then these thrusters will need to fire. Obviously, it would be the reverse if it was set up on the other side. So hopefully now, we're going to see that as we go over hills, we've already seen the thrusters pulse, but let's try and test this out a little bit more aggressively. Now, this vehicle is actually fairly stable as it happens because it's got such a wide wheel arch, but... Uh, Let's see, that should be tipping. You'll notice the gyroscope is staying level with the horizon. Very nicely so. And hopefully, if I just send one side up over that, it'll start pushing down that side. It's aggressively trying to compensate for the fact that there's a hill underneath my wheels. Obviously, it can't help me with that. But if I were taking this at any realistic speed, then that hill would have caused me a, a potentially to, to have some, quite a lot of problems. So these thrusters are really aggressively making sure that I stick to the rules and that this is a car. It has wheels. It should be on the ground. It shouldn't be flying. Cars don't fly. Awesome ones do. But this is not quite an awesome car. It will eventually be an awesome hovercraft. Again, that is why I've built it in the way I have is because I intend to evolve this design. I just wanted to get a gyroscope that actually worked first and I figured the best way to test that out would be to use wheels now. If we try and specifically tip this, let's find let's find a place that would or should be able to do that. Um, again, I've actually made this car frustratingly stable. Let's see. Let's see if I can I can try and convince this to try and tip over by going up this at an angle. No, no, absolutely not. It, it's barely even moving. I'm loving the the gyroscope. I'm trying to keep my camera on that right now, and I'm not really focusing on the road. Bad me. It should be looking where I'm driving. Okay, there's one way that we can test this out. That is... Punk. Alright, enjoy. Okay, that high, and the sensor can no longer see the gimbal. But it's actually balancing this vehicle fairly well, if you think about it, since I'm only lifting one side. Let's uh, move that to somewhere that isn't quite the center. Let's see, I want it to be about there, I would say. And given how much we've been tipping this, that gyroscope is still doing its job fairly well. There we go. Let's keep going. You really want to, to flip over. I know you do. Let's help you along, shall we? I'm sorry about this. It is going to hurt. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't want to hurt you, though. <laughs> Just keep going. No, it's not going to. It, does, it doesn't, it doesn't want to play. I actually think that perhaps I should... Oh, I'm sorry about this car. I'll rebuild you, I promise. Okay, well, it, it was it was kind of balancing for a little while. I think if we take the other one up, it, it's far too much of a, of a tip now. It can't quite see the sensor anymore to balance it. But there we go. Now that I've just tipped it up a little bit, there we are. I wonder if we'd be able to drive around with this. That would be a good test of it. It'd be like a three-legged dog. 
Hello. Now, one thing to note, your character is weightless. So, can we actually still drive? Would this be enough to keep us from tipping over? There's no way we should be able to drive, especially not turning to the right. That shouldn't be happening. Oh, what a fantastic system. This car is a three-legged dog. Oh, no, it's, it's now a stupid three-legged dog. Get down. Can I beat you into submission? No, I doubt it. Uh, okay, well, I need to get back to our base, so let's just give it a little bit of a tip. There we go. Good enough. I do need to be a little bit sensible then, I guess. Let's see. There we go. I'm surprised that any part of you is trying to dip. Now, if the thrusters were applying all of their force straight away to the vehicle, then I'd probably be overcompensating, especially when it was trying to balance because my left was rising. But... Given everything, those that suspension is doing the trick. Uh, don't don't pay any attention to that. That used to be a TARDIS. I say used to, and that is actually wrong because it never was a TARDIS. It wanted to be one. It failed. It failed me spectacularly. We're not going to talk about it. Let's go find our new home. I think it was somewhere in this direction, away from the failed TARDIS. I will build you one day, TARDIS. It will happen. Oh, I'm loving this. I can't believe I'm actually driving with such a lopsided vehicle right now. Okay, how's he going to handle this? Not bad overall. Yes, I would say that uh, our gyroscope, a success. All things told, I think it is doing very, very well. I just need to find our base so that I can uh, replace the wheel. Though, really, I think in the next episode, we're not actually going to need the wheels. We're going to go straight for hovercraft at this point. I think this experiment has been a sufficient success for me to say it's time for us to go back to the sky. We're not quite going to go into the into the deep blue yonder yet. We're not going to be chasing any sunsets. What we will be doing, though, is trying to move around without being attached to the ground. If that is a success, then the next stage after that will be a rocket ship. Oh, no. Don't, don't embarrass me now. Come on. You can do this. Come on, car. There we go. Well done, Gyroscope. You keep that car in line. Right, well, that is it for this episode. I hope it has been informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. And do remember to go check out Snow Crash if you're interested in, in more of the, the science behind this. I hope I've explained it sufficiently. But uh, if you do have any more questions, you may find the answers there. Or you can just drop me a comment on the video and I will do my best to reply. But that is it from me. As always, I hope you've enjoyed and will be joining me for the next... But until then, do take care.